I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about these inverters. Uh, I, I use these things for load testing and that's because they are power hungry. They will suck up whatever I can throw at the system and they, they've been really good for, for that. Uh, now, even before I started doing this stuff, they, they, they would pop up in a lot of conversations, people asking if they were safe to use, okay to use, and you know, generally they are safe to use, but they, there's been no testing done on these things before they come out, to, before they come to you, they're shipped straight out of China with no approval for anything. So sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. You have to be really careful about about how they work. You have to test them and make sure they shut off whenever the grid goes down. Uh, you just you know you kind of have to be careful about that kind of stuff. But one of the biggest reasons why I think you shouldn't use them is not because they're not UL approved or not because they're not efficient because they're really they're really not. I can have you know, three or 4,000 watts going into the system and I will get maybe, you know, 60% of it going through the grid. The biggest reason why I don't think people should use these is because you might notice there isn't one there. And that's because I blew up this capacitor. There should be one here, here, and then that's what's left of capacitor number three. About every three months, I blow one of these things up, at least. Sometimes more frequently, and sometimes I blow more than one of them up at once. Generally, what happens is either uh, that capacitor blows that up. It's always that one capacitor, or there's a, a whole row of, of are those MOSFETs. I don't really know. But they all blow up. There's one on you know, one row on that side and one row over there on the other side and it will blow every single one of them up. They'll all, you know, it'll just be full of black shrapnel. These things, uh, you know, if they get a voltage spike, if they get too hot, there's so many reasons why they fail and they're, they're just not very resilient. What I have done here is, you know, they, they cost me about a hundred bucks a piece. And this is probably inverter number 10. Now, all told, I've got a lot invested in these cheap, stupid inverters. Now, if, and I am working on setting up my system where I can control my voltage and the power going to my inverters a little bit better. And once that's done, I'm going to ditch the things. But the reason why I use them is because I do blow them up. I don't want to spend, you know, a couple thousand dollars on a real inverter and then blow it up. That's, that's what a lot of my tests do. So that's just something to be aware of whenever you're, you're looking around and you're looking at buying these things. If, if you end up having to replace it every couple of months to keep up with, with what you're doing, then you're not really saving a whole lot of money by buying the cheap little inverters. Uh, whereas if you buy the one inverter that's, that's good and built properly and can handle what you're doing and it lasts, you know, forever, then you've, uh, you're going to save money in the long run. So just, uh, just my thoughts on those inverters. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you all have a very wonderful day.